Hey guys, welcome back to my kitchen, which still has some stuff out from my trip to Sam's Club yesterday. So I don't know when this video will be going up in correlation to that, but it would have already gone up. So there's a Sam's Club haul first ever on my channel. Um, but this is the only like not meat stuff that I bought. It needs to be put away. And I've got, you can't really see it, some dishes on my stove. I was exhausted yesterday. Um, we were gone nearly all day. So today I have some fun stuff to make that I thought I would take you along for. We have a small group or depending on what you, your, your churches call them, but little small groups that meet usually in people's homes, um, throughout the week. And so anyways, that's what we have going on tonight. And I am bringing the, um, food for it. We don't all necessarily take a turn, but those who can and want to just when the host you know, needs it or wants help, she mentions it. So I have a couple things I'm going to make. There was one really fun um, pumpkin -y recipe, cookie recipe that I was going to make, but I need pumpkin pie filling, not pumpkin. And there's no way I'm going to the store today. Just not going to happen. So that's going to have to wait for another week. Um, because I can't eat a lot of sweets and my husband's not eating sweets, I like to try out recipes when I can like bring them somewhere and share them so that I'm not stuck eating at all. Not that I don't want to, but anyways, so I've got a dessert I'm going to make. I've got a <clears throat> fun, um, kind of like a Mexican type dip that we're going to make. I don't think there's a ground beef in it though. I need to pull out the recipes and make like a plan for my day, but I just figured I would start the video. <laughs> um, and then I want to come up with a third item of some kind. I'm excited to try out some new recipes and I'm going to take you along with it. I also have to figure out what we're going to eat for dinner tonight. Um, I have done a lot of slow cooker meals on this night, like for the night of our small group, but I'm not doing that today. I've got some stuff in the fridge that needs to be used up. I just need to figure out how to turn it into something. I might, I might have an idea. Anyways, I'll share that with you today as well. Some easy, quick meal. All right, guys, it is time to get going on the goodies. So the first thing we're going to make, I'm going to be making three things plus dinner later. So save the end for that. We're going to do, this is the best pumpkin snickerdoodle cookie recipe. That's what it's called. So I need one cup of unsalted butter softened. I've had this out for a while, but it's not really, I mean, it's not cold, but it's not particularly warm in here. And they were from the freezer. So they're actually not totally softened yet. So I'm going to put these in the microwave. I'm going to put it in at like a minute for like, like, I don't know half power because I don't want to melt it, but I want to soften it. All right, so that wasn't enough, so I put it in more and then I did it too much. So we're just gonna cream this together even though it's mostly melted. All right, I'm adding in a half a cup or the rest of this bag <laughs> of brown sugar. And then we need one cup of white sugar. We need a half a cup of pumpkin. Oh my word. <laughs> Can you see that? It's just, just, I cleaned the counter first. I always clean the counter before I start. Okay. Need a little more. All right, we need two teaspoons of vanilla. I'm using my new vanilla extract. There's vanilla beans in there. It's only been sitting for two months. I mean, it smells pretty vanilla-y. I think it's better the longer it sits, but you know, I didn't want to buy some when this is just about, you know, it's getting there. They, I think anywhere between three and six months is what people say for it being ready. So by the time we're really into baking season, it'll for sure be done. Okay, what else do we need? Half a teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of pumpkin pie, or pumpkin, yeah, pumpkin pie spice. Half a teaspoon of cinnamon. There wasn't quite enough left in there. I'm just gonna sprinkle in the rest <laughs> or not. That's like caking up in there. If you are not into pumpkin-y stuff, don't worry. Not all the recipes in today's video are going to be pumpkin related. So I need half, one and a half teaspoons of baking powder. I need to put this on my list. I'm getting quite low. All right, we're gonna mix this all together. Okay, I'm adding in one egg. 
All right, I mixed in the egg. I just wasn't recording. And now we need to add in a total of two and two thirds cup of flour. It says to add flour slowly and mix until well combined. So I'm gonna start off with one cup. We'll mix, add, mix, till we get it all. We'll do the final mixing with a spoon because the batter is becoming thick. All right, guys, so I'm still mixing this and I should have read this recipe before because I'm going to be cutting it close on time. I'm supposed to put this in the fridge for at least an hour to chill. And it says in big letters, don't skip this step. It's very important. <laughs> it brings out the flavors the longer you chill the dough. <laughs> There's a problem though. Because I have somewhere I'm supposed to be bringing these. And I have something else I need to put in the oven that I'm also making. So we're gonna get this in the fridge for as long as we can and hope for the best. So I'm gonna have the recipe linked down below and here's a lesson, a reminder, you should read the entire recipe beforehand instead of just as you go. So, All right, so we're gonna put a pause on the cookies. I figured out time-wise, I will have enough time. It will be like just enough time but I have enough time. Um, hopefully I can fit them all on like the cookie sheets I have instead of having to do like batches <laughs> because I'll have time for probably one run in the oven and then them to cool. Um, but we're gonna move on and I am making a dip, an apple dip. Um, I'm gonna bring apples and pretzels to dip this in. It's very simple, it's three ingredients but it kind of tastes like um, caramel. I actually believe I've made this one before. I may have shared it with you guys, but I don't know. So we have one block of cream cheese softened, and then we need three quarters cup of brown sugar. Just open up a new package, so it's a little bit of a challenge here. It's a one quarter cup scoop, so we're gonna do three of these. And then one teaspoon of vanilla. And that is all. I'm gonna use my hand mixer. I had to wash these. Just gonna keep washing stuff. And make... Wow, remaking stuff. I am excited about dinner tonight. I decided what to make using some stuff that needs to be used up in the fridge. I don't know, it's gonna be quick-ish, but I think it's gonna be really good. So stay tuned. All right, we're gonna mix this up. That is it for this recipe. That's it. That literally took, I mean, what, like two minutes to make? I'm gonna get this chilling in the fridge. Although I don't think you want it like, it's one of those things where it's supposed to be chilled, but like if it's chilled too much, the cream cheese is gonna be too firm. Um, so that's just something to keep in mind. Um, I'm gonna cut up some apples. I'm just gonna, bring like a small cutting board and a knife and do it there. Not that they don't have stuff that I could use, but I hate going to people's homes and then like asking to like, <laughs> to like, I don't know, get in, their, get in their space. So I'm going to just bring a cutting board and a knife. I'm gonna put this in my little a dip bowl. This is a very handy bowl. I think I picked it up at Marshall's uh, a long time ago, but um, you put a little bit of ice in the bottom and then put water so that there's water around the bottom and it helps keep it cold. I don't know if I'll do that or not because like I said, if it's too cold, I feel like it's not a very like scoopable dip. So like, you want it cold, but not too cold. But it doesn't look like a lot, but it makes plenty. Like it really makes plenty and this stuff is delicious. All right guys, we are moving right along. It's almost time for me to pull that cookie dough out, get the cookies in the oven. So I need to get this bean dip. I don't know if I told you that we're making, it's a, it's called like Texas trash is what it says. Um, I feel like a spatula wasn't the right tool for this. Um, but it's like a bean dip. It's a hot bean dip. So 
we need one can. Well, I'm cutting the recipe in half, so I'll have the original link down below. But with everything else that I'm bringing and the amount of people, I didn't think that a 9 by 13 was necessary. Hopefully, I don't regret that. Um, there we go. Finally. So, I've got one can of refried beans. I'm going to do four ounces of cream cheese. This has been sitting out to get at room temperature. With everything I'm making, I was out of larger um, <laughs> glass bowls. So we're gonna use this metal one, even though it's harder for you to see everything. We're gonna put in a half a cup. Actually, that's gonna finish this up. We're gonna half a cup of sour cream. Definitely got myself um, cutting all of this pretty close here. So this is another really, really easy recipe. And then I need some taco seasoning. Um, would be equivalent to a half of a package because I'm cutting the recipe in half. So um, you would just, if you do the whole thing, you just need one cup, or I'm sorry, not one cup. That would be obnoxious. You need one packet. Uh, don't listen to me, read the recipe. Mix this all together. There needs to be a spatula tool designed to go into these grooves. So if there is one and you know about it, tell me about it. If not, you should invent one. All right, so I'm using this dish. I don't know what size it is. This is a cute little dish I picked up at Aldi. So I was needing more dishes with, uh, bakeware dishes with lids. I don't know that I need to, but I'm going to go ahead and grease this really quick just for good measure. Putting this in a little bit earlier than I need to. Actually, at this point, I guess I'm not. I don't like it. I'm going to have to put my cookies in, like, <laughs> overlapping time-wise, but... It is what it is, guys. We're going to make this happen. All right, we're going to put this in our dish. All right, now we need to top with a total of two cups of cheese. That's right. The original recipe calls for four cups. It says to use Monterey and cheddar. So I happen to have that. I think that's what it said. Or maybe it said Colby. I don't remember, but I'm using Monterey and cheddar. <laughs> if you happen to have like a Tex mex or mexican cheese type of thing i think obviously that would be fantastic i don't see why not but that is going to be it for this one we're going to put in the oven at 350 for 20 to 30 minutes yeah, i'm going to just serve that with tortilla chips i am going to sprinkle a little more taco seasoning on top for a little added flavor and it'll just be pretty um so that's what i'm gonna do all right we're gonna get this going in the oven. All right, so I almost forgot there is a sugar coating for the outside. You need about a half a cup. I'm not measuring at this point because guys, I am cutting it close. I think it's half a cup of sugar. Um, I'll have the recipe for you um, linked down below, but we want a half a teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice and a half a teaspoon of cinnamon. Get that all mixed up together. I'm gonna get parchment paper on my baking sheets here. All right, so it says you want about two tablespoons. So we are going to eyeball that. We're gonna roll it into a ball, roll it in our sugar. It seemed like a big cookie, but I feel maybe this is more than two tablespoons. I have a cookie scoop that's larger, but it's a three tablespoon, so I didn't wanna use that. I don't know. I feel like that's right. And if I'm wrong, well, I guess if I'm wrong, it'll take a little longer in the oven, <laughs> which I don't have time for. Guys, this is why sometimes like um, filming recipes and stuff is hard because it takes longer to film and then there's just sometimes your rush and all this stuff comes up. But I didn't want to just like scrap sharing these with you because I was excited about all of these recipes today so I don't know hopefully you can handle the chaotic stuff but if you are someone who needs maybe you know some less chaotic instructions I'll have the recipes linked down below and I probably won't be able to I might be able to snap a picture at group they do all know I'm I have YouTube now I think everyone does word got out and then one night at small group if they do, they don't all comment, <laughs> if that's you, um, just, I'm just kidding. Um, one night, 
somehow it became the uh, challenge for everyone to find my channel because I wasn't telling anyone the channel name. And it was discovered while we were all sitting there. People were on their phones looking for it and my secret is out. So maybe I can take a picture of the final product. But um, I will also let you know what we, what, you know, how everything came out when we get back. Because after I get these in the oven, it's going to be pretty rushed. I'm going to need to go get ready because I myself am not ready. All right, I'm going to go ahead and get one pan in the oven. This is how I did it to space them out a little bit, but give them some room. Yeah, I'm not going to be able to fit both pans in there with the taco bean dip thing. So they take 11 to 13 minutes. And when I'm going to probably just get this other pan ready and take the bean dip out. The bean dip didn't have to cook. It just needed to be hot. So, and it's actually been in there for probably close to 30 minutes. So, okay, I'm going to do the other pan, but you don't need to see all. So I was just turned on my camera with the back of my hand and so now my camera's crooked, but I'm seeing why it's a must have that you chill the dough first because I'm at the very end of it and it's becoming, you know, a little bit more messy. Um, so as the recipe says, don't skip that step, even if it means you're running a little bit behind. And I think I estimated my little mixture here pretty good because I used nearly all of that. All right, guys, so we are back. This is not the quickest meal, but it is um, using up stuff that needs to be used up. So I have two tablespoons of butter in the pan. Did I tell you what we were making? I don't know if I mentioned it earlier. We're gonna do some Alfredo. We're gonna do some chicken and broccoli Alfredo. I'm just looking for a whisk. <laughs> I have some heavy cream in the fridge and I measured it out and it's like just over what I actually needed for this recipe, so it's perfect. We had some leftover chicken. So I have some noodles boiling. It's not fettuccine, but that's okay. And then I've got some broccoli steaming up too. It's starting to spit water on me in the stove. So I'm gonna lower that burner. So two tablespoons of garlic. No, two tablespoons of butter and about a teaspoon of garlic. And then we're going to add in one tablespoon of flour and whisk that. It's actually a pretty decently quick recipe, but you have to get the water to boil for the noodles and all that. And now I'm going to slowly start to add in our heavy cream. I'm gonna do just a little bit at a time and turn up my heat just a little bit here. I was trying to think of a way to use up the heavy cream because I knew it was on the verge of gonna go bad. It doesn't taste bad at all. I tasted it and it's all good, but I knew it wasn't gonna be long, so. This worked out perfect. We had leftover rotisserie chicken from the other day. So, all right, we're gonna let this heat up. Now I'm going to add in, I think it was a quarter cup. Yeah, about a quarter cup of sour cream. I'm gonna whisk that in. Well, in a second, I'm also gonna grab the cheese. Calls for a half a cup each of like freshly grated and then grated Parmesan. I'm using these two. I happen to have both of these open. One is like thicker, one is more fine. And I think that was pretty close to half a cup. I'm just gonna do all that. I also added a hair more um, heavy cream, not a lot, but a little more than the recipe called for just to use it up. So I wanna add the extra cheese in. And then a little bit of salt and you can also pepper if you want. And then we're just gonna let this cook on low for a few minutes and let it all thicken up. And that's it. If you knew that Alfredo sauce was that easy, then good for you. I think I knew it was easy. I just don't think I've actually done it. I did it a different kind, like a quote unquote healthy version. So it didn't, definitely did not have all of this stuff in it. And that one was easy, but I've never made like a real Alfredo sauce. So that's it. We're just gonna let this cook, let the cheese melt. In a second here, I'm gonna add our chicken. We just pulled it off the rotisserie like chicken. Um, and I'm gonna add this. I'll add it to here in a minute just to warm it up. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and add in 
our chicken. This is just what was left. You wanna make sure this sauce doesn't boil, but you wanna keep it, you know, you want it to like heat up and thicken. So just make sure that you're stirring often and don't have the temperature too high. When my broccoli gets done, I'm gonna to toss that in here too, just so that um, it can stay warm while I'm waiting for the pasta. Broccoli is done. Probably a little more done than I would like, but my husband will enjoy that. All right, guys, so this actually came together pretty quickly. I will let you know what we think about it, and I will also let you know the outcome of the recipes I showed, showed you earlier. Overall, I would say it was a win, but I do need to give you a couple updates on them, so I will do that as soon as I'm done eating, but for you, it'll be in just a second. All right, guys, so full disclosure, clearly not that same night, not even the next day, a couple days later, but I wanted to update you on all of those recipes. We had a crazy busy week and I feel like the end of every day, I had enough and couldn't just, just had nothing else in me. So I wanna run through the recipes and let you know the cookies. I ran out of time and I brought some that I feel like were not fully cooked. I just put a disclosure out there to everyone. They said the flavor was really good. They agreed that they were a little bit more doughy, but it didn't people keep people from going back for seconds. So I would say they were a hit. And when I came home, I was like, I wonder if I can put, I didn't have a lot left, but I had a few. I was like, I wonder if I can put them back in the oven to see how it works. And it worked out great. And I'm actually eating one now. I'm finally trying one. I'm keeping mine in my, in the freezer because I really, really have to limit my sugar intake. So this way they won't go bad on me, but they are so good. So I don't know if the cook time needed to just be longer for my oven or if I made them too big but I think you can tell by looking at them. I was pretty sure, but I just had no more time left. The bean dip, huge hit. I should have just made the full batch. Everyone loved it. We brought none of that home. So definitely a win. And then it was funny today, I was talking to my sister-in-law because she was looking for um, some type of dip that didn't have Elvita or American cheese, which is something that I'm always looking for too, because I don't like to use those. Not that I don't like to eat them, but I don't usually use those. And I sent her this recipe. I was like, this is a win for sure. You could easily add ground beef or ground sausage in it as well. And the dip for apples and I brought pretzels, pretzels and apples. Both were really good in that. I had, a, had both absolutely delicious. That was also a big hit. So I definitely recommend them all. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Oh, and our dinner. That was so good. And even better the next day. Cause like I said, this video is a couple days later. We had leftovers last night. So good. So good. So I recommend all of them. Sorry for the chaotic video, but I just feel like the last couple of weeks, that's how it has been for me. Just a little chaos, but I'm still sharing everything with you. So I hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. All the recipes will be linked down below for you. And if you're new, I would love it if you would consider subscribing to my channel. I enjoy sharing grocery hauls, yummy food, and all sorts of other lifestyle content. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you next time.